Okay, so I'm going to go over the solutions for the January uh, 2013 uh, P1 paper. Question 1. Uh, diagram 1 shows energy transfer per second from a badly insulated house on a cold day in winter. Um, you can see there's heat uh, coming out in different ways. Uh, it says calculate in kilowatts the power of the heating system used to keep the inside of the house in diagram 1 at a constant temperature. So what we have to think about there is that the energy transferred from the heating system equals the energy transferred from the house to the outside. So you've got energy coming out there. All you need to do is add all that up. So you've got 1.7 plus 1.1. plus 1.1 is 2.8, 3.6, 4.3, 5.0. So it's just 5.0 kilowatts. So moving on. Uh, the heating system switched on for 7 hours a day. Calculate in kilowatt hours the energy transfer. It says use the correct equation from the uh, physics equation sheet. Now that equation is uh, energy equals power times time. The power you've just worked out which is energy transferred, transferred per second, was 5 from your previous answer, times 7 hours, because we've got kilowatts, 5 kilowatts times 7 hours equals 35 kilowatt hours. And it, energy costs 15p per kilowatt hour. Uh, calculate the cost, well if each kilowatt hour is 15p, so it's just simply 15 times 35 and that's going to equal 525p. Okay. Now, don't forget to include a unit there. Um, you could say 5.25. Uh, the heating system is switched off at midnight. The graph shows that the temperature inside the house changes after the heating system has been switched off. Draw a ring around the correct answer in the box to complete the sentence. So between midnight and 6, the rate of energy uh, transfer from the house does decrease, decrease and stay constant or it increases. Well, if you look at the graph, you can see it keeps decreasing. It slows down, but it's uh, decreasing. Um, so you can simply see decreases. Now, give a reason for your answer. Well, what affects the rate of energy transfer? Well, one of the things that affects rate of transfer is the, the difference in temperatures. So, um, temperature inside the house, as it's getting less, uh, as the temperature inside the house gets less and less, it gets closer and closer to the temperature outside the house. So there's a smaller temperature difference between the inside of the house and the outside of the house. Um, you can see that the line is sort of fairly steep there, it's flatter there. You could say that the gradient of the line, the steepness of the line, gets less, but that's just saying that the um, uh, the, the temperature difference is, is getting less, and so the, that's why the, uh, that's why the energy transfer is a bit slower. Next question one B. Um, you've got two walls. Um, this one has an air gap in between it. This one has plastic foam in between it. You can see this has got a 0.7 U value and 0.3 U value. So the plastic foam reduces energy transfers by convection. I'll explain why. Well, what's convection? Convection is the um, transfer of energy by the movement of, of air uh, in this case. And what does the foam do? Well, the foam traps the air. So um, you're going to get one mark for saying that the, the air is trapped in the foam or air bubbles are trapped in the foam. And a second mark for saying, well, then it, the air can't circulate, or it can't move, or there's no convection current that can be formed. Filling the air gap with plastic foam reduces the U-value of the wall, and what is meant by U-value? Well, uh, it's a measure of how effective or how good a material is as an insulator, or at keeping energy in. So it's just how good the material is at keeping energy in. 1C. So, 
uh, homeowner is part of the outside wall of her house removed and replaced with double glazed glass doors. You can see that the U value of the glass doors is much higher than the U value of the wall. Explain the effect in replacing part of the outside wall with glass doors on the rate of energy transfer from the house. Well, higher U value means it's less good as an insulator. So the energy transfer is going to increase. You get one mark for that. And the second mark was for explaining that the glass is not as good an insulator as the wall. On to question two. The diagram shows a car radiator. Um, radiator is part of the engine cooling system. Liquid coolant heated by the car engine enters the radiator. As it passes through the radiator, the radiator transfers energy to the surroundings and to the temperature of the, uh, when the temperature of the coolant falls. Why is it painted black? Well, remember the colour of something has no effect on convection or conduction. It's all to do with radiation, um, infrared radiation. And so the matte black is a good emitter of infrared radiation. And it's very important that, that you've got that. So it's a good uh, emitter, sorry about the handwriting, uh, of infrared radiation. That will get you one mark. What's the point of that? It's to give the maximum energy transfer to the surroundings. So you want to get the coolant cooled down. You want to give its heat away. And so you have black because it's a good emitter and that will maximise the rate of energy transfer to the surroundings. So basically the temperature will, will fall faster. Um, so different radiators have different numbers of cooling fins along the length of the radiator. Sketch graph shows that the number of the cooling fins affects the rate of energy transfer from the radiator. The number of cooling fins affects the rate of energy transfer. Uh, explain how. Well, what does a fin do? Uh, it's like the ones at the back of your radiator that you might have at home or in the classroom. They increase the surface area, for one mark, and that increases the rate of energy transfer. So, or you can say that, that more fins uh, mean a greater rate of energy transfer. So, one mark for the fins increase the surface area, and second, mark, uh, they increase the rate of energy transfer, the rate of heat transfer. Uh, part C. When the engine is working normally, two kilograms of coolant passes through the radiator uh, each second. The temperature of the coolant falls from 112 to 97 degrees C. Calculate the energy transferred. Uh, you've got a specific heat capacity there, and again it says use the correct uh, equation from the physics equation sheet. Um, so that equation is going to be E for energy equals the mass times C, which is the specific heat capacity, times theta, which is the, the change in temperature. So the mass is 2 kilograms. Specific heat capacity is 3,800. And the change in temperature is 112 take away 97, uh, which is 15 degrees. So when you multiply all that together, you end up with 114,000 joules. Okay. So in this case, you're going to get one mark for the correct change in temperature, um, or two marks for getting as far as that. And the third mark for the answer, but if you get the answer, you get it all right. So on cold days, uh, some of the energy transferred from the hot uh, car engine is used to warm the air out inside the car. It's a useful energy transfer. What effect, if any, does the energy transfer have on the overall efficiency of the car engine? Um, well, if you think what efficiency is, efficiency equals useful output energy divided by total input energy. So the total input energy stays the same. Um, but in this case, um, some of the energy is used to warm the car. So this is energy that's normally just radiated out and is therefore wasted. But now it's being kept and becomes more useful. So if it becomes more useful, uh, that means it's going to increase the efficiency. Okay, question 3. The graph shows how demand for a 